What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So in this video, I wanted to do a recap of the movie we never got, Halloween 3D, which would have been a sequel to Rob Zombie's Halloween 1 and 2 from 2007 to 2009 respectively. This script though, because I've heard there's several of them, this script was written by Todd Farmer and Patrick Lusher or Lucier. Um, and we know this concept, the whole movie entirely got scrapped. We know it was at one point going to be the next project. Then it got scrapped. Then it was supposed to be Halloween Returns. Then we ultimately got Halloween 2018 in 2018. So I'm just going to recap the important bits of this courtesy of this website, the Horror Syndicate, and share my thoughts on what could have gone down as a sequel to Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. So this script began with a different perspective of the events at the end of the second film. We're still in the cabin, but it's from Lori's perspective and her point of view during that encounter where the police have that cabin surrounded and she's in there being held down to the ground, presumably. Loomis goes in, Michael's in there, Ghost Deborah's there. And Lori is stabbing at Michael repeatedly and she delivers the final blow with the knife to Michael's face. However, she comes to discover that she did not kill Michael and that the person she stabbed to death had been Dr. Loomis. On the scene and still in shock over the death of Annie, Lee Brackett is desperate to protect Lori and is in denial of the fact that Lori murdered Loomis. Meanwhile, elsewhere in Haddonfield, we're introduced to a new lead protagonist named Amy, who parties with her friends as the scene at the shack makes the news and the drunken group of friends decide that they're going to go out and TP the town. Back at the shack, the police are unable to find Michael and Brackett has Lori loaded into his cruiser. He insists that they contact another psychologist to meet him and Lori at the hospital. But while on the road, Michael appears and strikes, crashing through the windshield and lunging at Brackett. The cruiser crashes into a ditch and Michael is flung back out through the windshield. Michael then flees or then frees Lori from the cruiser, carrying her off. Soon after, a banged up bracket is met by Dr. Josie Blair, who has had some experience with Myers and Loomis. Looking for insight as to where Michael would have taken Lori, the two conclude that Michael's business wasn't done with Lori and that he was looking for someone else as well. Meanwhile, at the local cemetery, Michael and Lori dig up Deborah Meyer's grave, but are interrupted by Amy and her drunken friends who have stumbled upon them. Lori tries to warn the group to leave if they want to live, but as Amy's boyfriend approaches the grave and recognizes Lori from the news, Lori pushes him into the dug up grave where Michael awaits. Michael kills Amy's boyfriend and then climbs out of the grave and kills her other friends as they try to flee. Just as he goes to strike at Amy, sirens and flashing lights approach from the distance and Lori stops him. They remove Deborah's corpse from the grave and then throw Amy inside the casket with the headless corpse of her boyfriend. They then toss several headstones on top of the casket, preventing Amy from getting out, which apparently is just a ploy to slow down the police and get them off their trail. Michael and Lori take Deborah's rotting corpse and flee the scene just before Brackett and the other police officer arrive other police officers arrive bracket josie and several other officers follow hot on michael and Lori's trail while newly introduced cop cooper goodman and a few others attempt to free amy from the casket cooper frees her eventually and loads her into an ambulance riding with amy in the back at mcgrady's dam bracket and josie find Lori, but are attacked by michael michael slaughters several police officers and bracket angry gets michael's attention by firing at Deborah's corpse multiple times. Lori takes off with Josie just behind her. After hearing Lori screams, Michael abandons his attack on Brackett and chases after his sister. Michael catches up, wounds Josie, and then offers his knife to Lori as a gesture to finish the job. As Lori considers, the ambulance with Cooper and Amy accidentally strikes Lori, sending her to the asphalt and nearly crippling her. Michael kills the driver of the ambulance and then attacks Cooper and Amy, wounding Cooper in the process. They manage to get clear just as the cruiser with Brackett and another officer strikes the ambulance from the front. The ambulance crashes over the guardrails of the dam and goes up in flames, melting Meyer's mask to his face before exploding. Brackett approaches Lori, but Lori, having recovered Cooper's gun, opens fire, shooting Brackett in the face, killing him. Now, I will say that that seemed like a complete waste of the bracket we have met from those first two films. He, to me, seemed like one of the best parts of those Rob Zombie films. So this being his fate 
and the way it kind of seems like he really didn't get much to do feels like an underutilization of the character and feels like a fate that he has not earned so i'm not in agreement with that the script then cuts almost a year later so it's a year later after that attack and after that fallout of what happened at the shack on last halloween we're at a year later, Amy is under the care of Josie Blair at the J. Burden Institute. The bulk of the remaining story takes place inside of this institution, and it's revealed that this is also where Laurie Strode is also being treated too. Amy, said to be released almost a almost after a year of therapy, blows her chance of freedom after becoming or after coming face to face with Lori and takes a few swings at her. So these two get into a brawl, it seems. Meanwhile, Cooper Goodman is the only police officer who is not satisfied with the conclusion that Michael died in the ambulance explosion and believes that he is responsible for multiple unsolved murders that have happened throughout the last 12 months, with each unsolved murder circling around the location of the J. Burton Institute. Michael, indeed alive, manages to get a new mask at a local Halloween store, killing the stock boy in the process. At the institution, Josie sits in on a session with Lori and Dr. Kibner, where we learn that she believes she had shot and killed Michael a year earlier. We get a glimpse of the previous scene at the dam from her perspective, where she sees Michael approaching her and not Brackett. Kibner then drops the bomb on her that she had shot Lee Brackett in the face and not Michael, just as she had stabbed Loomis at the abandoned shack. This sparks an emotional outburst of remorse, guilt, and regret. Cooper following up on his investigation of michael's whereabouts ends up confronting an orderly from the institute who is off duty and at home with his wife this orderly just happens to also be fucking Lori, and cooper knows it michael shows up just after cooper leaves killing the orderly and his wife but because he forgot his phone at the orderly's home cooper returns and just barely misses michael the following day october 31st Cooper visits Amy and Josie at the institution. They all believe that Michael will be coming to the institution to kill them and free his little sister. But Cooper has a plan involving C4s hidden in the urn containing the ashes of Deborah Myers. Later, Michael does make his presence known and all hell breaks loose with Michael taking out Dr. Kibner, nurses, orderlies, and anyone who is in his path. Cooper tries to get Amy out of there and Josie is severely wounded and nearly killed. Meanwhile, Amy's group of crazy friends in the institution mount their defense by taking Lori hostage and tying her to a chair as bait while they await with their makeshift weapons. This, of course, backfires on them as Michael takes them all out and frees Lori. Michael and Lori leave the institution heading into town. Cooper and Amy race after them looking to execute Cooper's plan. Michael and Lori get separated in a crowd of people in town where a big event was to happen at Pliskin Park. Amy catches up to Lori, handcuffs her to herself, needing to draw her in to Cooper and Michael at the Great Pumpkin stage in the park. Lori and Amy fight while cuffed together just as Michael and Cooper fight. Michael slashes Cooper's stomach open and Cooper hands Michael the urn with the C4 back on Amy and Lori. Lori claims that she does not just want it to be over with and quickly grabs the cleaver that Amy dropped. Lori then chops off her own hand, freeing herself. This gets Michael's attention and he moves from the stage to Lori, who is bleeding to death, carrying the urn with him. Amy moves away from both of them and approaches the stage looking for Cooper, but Cooper stops her, revealing that the C4 and detonator are stuffed in his stomach. The explosion goes off, killing Cooper and sending Amy flying into the chairs in front of the stage. Back on Lori and Michael. Lori grabs the hand with the knife, puts it against her chest, understanding of what she wants. Michael pulls her close and embraces her as the knife penetrates. Lori dies and Michael vanishes from the scene as police and a bang Josie arrive. Now, I will say this. This screenplay seems to have a lot of potential compared to the first two movies. But what I do not like is still continuing to see this deteriorated version of Laurie Strode. Now, I will say this. I think Scout Compton would have done a terrific job capturing it once again like she did in the second film. But I just think we're still going down that path of Laurie just being this very unlikable protagonist. Some of the things that they were doing with Deborah Myers seemed a lot more reasonable to me as opposed to what we saw in the second sequel or the first sequel, I meant to say. But you guys let me know what you think about this recap down in the comment section below. I do like the fact that we also got to see an extension of what else went on after that shack event 
at the end of H2. Let me know what you think down below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and there's a video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.